fingers crossed, you can finally all hear me live at Harvest Festival Live. You're joining us from the Wildlife Trust channels and the Jordan Serials YouTube channels, but we're gonna jump straight in. So I'm very excited to introduce our celebrity guests from Down on the Farm and JLS, none other than JB Gill. Hi, JB. Hi, Mia. Hi, everyone. I am so happy to be here today at this Harvest Celebration. Now, some of you might know me from my role as a member of JLS alongside Aston, Marvin and Arishay, but I also have another job. That's right. I'm a farmer. I have my own farm and it's quite a change from singing and dancing, but still just as much fun. Now, what does farming have to do with today? I hear you ask. What is the Harvest Festival Live all about? Well, traditionally at this time of year, people get together up and down the country to celebrate the harvest which is a time when farmers gather the crops that they've been growing in the fields to make our food. And a harvest festival is a chance to celebrate our hardworking farmers and also the food that they've grown and learn more about where it comes from. Now you might have been to a harvest festival in the past, perhaps at school where you've gotten together with all your friends and celebrated all things harvest and perhaps even sung songs. But of course this year it's a little bit different and we can't get together in big groups. But what we can do is watch a real life harvest taking place. That's right. And we can talk to some of the people who grow our food and take care of our land. That's pretty cool if you ask me. And I'm really excited to learn more about harvest and I hope you are too. We've also got something really special coming up. I'm gonna be announcing the winner of the Harvest Festival Poetry Competition. Now the entries have been brilliant. Thank you so much for all your creativity. I'm really looking forward to reading out the winning one. But for now, how about we take a trip to Jordan's Oak Farm to see the harvest in action. You coming? Good. Let's do it. This is Greenhall Farm in Hertfordshire, which is in the southeast of England. And this is Guy Tucker, who owns Greenhall Farm. Guy grows oats on his farm, which he harvests every year in the summertime. He knows when the crops are ripe because they turn a golden colour. The weather has to be just right so that the oats are not too wet or too dry when he cuts them. Nature provides the soil, the rain and the sunshine that we need to grow our food. That's why it's very important that we look after nature. Guy cares about nature and he works with Jordan Cereals and the Wildlife Trusts to make sure he's creating a happy home on his farm for animals, insects and plants. On the farm, there are wildflowers which attract insects like bees. Bees are really important because they pollinate crops which make our food. The hedgerows around the field create a space for birds to build their nests. On the day of the harvest, Guy gets up extra early. He uses a special machine called a combine harvester which hoovers up all of the oats and separates them from their stalks. The stalks are left behind on the ground to rot. That sounds bad, but it's actually good because they get eaten by worms and other insects and a worm poo is good for the soil. Once the oats have been collected, Guy takes them to the grain store, which is basically a big shed. Next, they are taken to be rolled flat, ready to go into your breakfast or cereal bar. Sorry, everyone. All those golden oats that Guy was just harvesting made my tummy rumble, so I couldn't help myself. It's a lot of hard work doing all that growing and harvesting so that I can enjoy a yummy breakfast snack just like that one. Thanks, Guy. Now, if you're feeling a bit peckish too, check out the cereal bar recipes on the Jordan's website. Now, they're super easy to make and you don't even have to put them in the oven. So go and give them a try. Check out jordanscereals.co.uk and get stuck in. There's also loads of harvest activities on there as well, so lots of fun to be had. Now it's time to hear from you. Yes, you. We've gathered a team of expert advisors who know loads about nature and farming to answer your questions. So let's get quizzing them, come on. The first question is from Rowan, who lives in Manchester. Go ahead, Rowan. What animals do you have on your farm? What a great question to start us off. Thank you very much, Rowan. 
Now to answer it, we have the man himself, Guy the Farmer, who you just met. Now I'll let him introduce himself and I'll let you answer the Rowan's question. Guy, over to you. My name is Guy. I'm a farmer at Greenhall Farm and I grow oats for Jordans. I'm 56 and a half years old. We are lucky to have lots of different wildlife on the farm, from deer to badgers and foxes. We have stoats and weasels. We have um, lots of different types of birds, from great big buzzards to little tiny firecrests, and lots of butterflies and bees as well. Wow, so amazing that there are so many different animals living on a farm. My pigs and turkeys must have lots of animal friends. I'm gonna be keeping a close eye on them from now on. Thank you very much, Guy. Our next question is from Ira in London. What a beautiful name, Ira. And it's about slightly smaller furry friends. Take it away, Ira. Why are these important? Thanks, Ira. That is a brilliant question. Now, to answer it, we have Alison from the Wildlife Trusts. And she's going to introduce herself and answer your question. Over to you, Alison. Hi, I'm Alison from the Wildlife Trusts and I work with Jordan's farmers like Guy. Now bees, they're wonderful animals. They move pollen around from one flower to another and plants need that to happen so that they can produce fruits and seeds and we call that pollination. And of course humans and other animals, we like to eat those fruits and seeds and then some of them grow into new plants as well. So without bees, we wouldn't have enough food and we wouldn't have all the wonderful variety of plants that we have. Thanks, Alison. And we can all agree, I'm sure, that bees are pretty cool. So our next question is from Mia from Jordans, who we all met at the start. Now, Mia knows all about how crops from the fields end up in our food. And to ask her a question, we have Sophie from Pembrokeshire. What's your question for Mia, Sophie? Why do you put oats into your cereal? Thanks, Sophie. Mia, why do you put oats in your cereal? Thanks, JB. And that's a really good question, Sophie. The reason that we put oats in our cereal is that they're really good for you. Oats are brilliant for breakfast because they're full of fibre. And that's very good for keeping our tummies full as well as keeping our tummies healthy too. Oats are also filled with lots of vitamins and minerals, which are really good for you. So that's why we use oats. Not only are they delicious, they're good for you too. Well, thanks, Mia. I will definitely be having oats in my cereal tomorrow. Now, let's go to Struan in Dumbarton right now with his question. What happens to the animals and insects when the crops are cut down? Do they lose their horns? Well, thanks, Struan. I'm actually wondering that too. Can you help, Farmer Guy? When we are harvesting, I'm sitting up high on the combine seat. I can see lots of animals leaving the field into the hedgerows and the woodland around the edge, where they mostly live. We have some fields on the farm which we plant for, the, for bird food. It's not harvested, but it's left over winter so they have plenty to eat. Also, some fields we plant with flowers, so the bees and the butterflies have food. And some fields are left fallow. They're quiet spaces for the deer and the hares. Well, thanks, Guy. It sounds like you do a great job of looking after the wildlife on your farm. Let's go over to Felix in Brighton right now with another question. Why is brown poo good for the soil? <laughs> Excellent question. The question we've all been waiting for, Felix. Alison, over to you for this one, I think. Worm poo is so good for the soil. Earthworms eat decaying plants and vegetables and fruit and then what their bodies don't need they poo it back out and that poo goes to help build healthy soils and it's also full of plant food or nutrients and plants use those nutrients in order to grow and that includes the crops that farmers like Guy grow like these oats here that go to make our food. Wow, I think I'm going to be looking at worms in a whole new light now. Thanks, Alison. Let's go to Connie now, who lives in Norwich, with another question for Mia. Why do we have harvest festivals? 
Great question, Connie. Mia, why is it that we gather to celebrate harvest like we're doing today? Well, JB, as we know from today, harvest is when farmers gather in all of the crops that they've been growing throughout the year so that we have food to eat. But it wasn't always like it was today. Harvest is a tradition that has gone on for hundreds of years. But in the olden days, rather than using a combine harvester like Guy, whole communities would have to come together to bring the crops in from the fields, even the children. This was a huge amount of work and very important because crops don't grow in the winter. So everybody needed to get involved to bring the crops in so that there was enough to eat when it got cold. This was a huge amount of work. And once all of the food had been gathered, the whole community would come together to celebrate all of their hard work in what was called a harvest festival. Today, we don't have to bring in the food ourselves. Instead, we have farmers like Guy and nature to thank for growing our food for us. But it's still nice to have a harvest festival together, like we are now, to say a great big thank you to the farmers and all the other people that help make the food that we enjoy. And of course, a big thank you to nature as well, with which without, we wouldn't have any food. Thanks, Mia. Who knew harvest festivals had been celebrated for so long? It makes me super grateful and even happier that we can continue the tradition today. Let's go to Noah now, who lives in Surrey, with another question, Farmer Guy. How fast does your combine harvester go? Oh, great question, Noah. I think we're all wondering that. Farmer Guy, over to you. When the combine's working in the field, it's only travelling at five miles an hour, and you could run faster. But if I'm on the road, going between fields, it can be 25 miles an hour. You wouldn't keep up. But if you were in the car behind me, that wouldn't feel very fast. Thanks, Guy. Imagine racing with a combine harvester. <laughs> Next up, we've got a question from Zara, who lives in Leeds. What can I do to look after nature? I'm so glad you asked that, Zara. I think we all need to know what we can do to look after nature. Alison, over to you. I'm going to tell you three things that you can do for nature. One, learn to love it, because if you love it, you'll care for it and inspire others to as well. Two, provide some homes for wildlife, put up a bird box or make a log pile in the corner of the garden or sow a plant pot with some nice scented flowers that will attract insects to your balcony. And three, try and get mum and dad to buy food that comes from farms where we know that they care for wildlife too. Well, thanks, Alison. That is such brilliant advice for us all to follow. Guys, we've come to the moment, the final question. And it's from Aidan, who lives in London. Aidan, go ahead. How do the oats get from the grain store into my cereal bar? Another great question. I must be honest, those oats don't look like they go straight from the grain store into the packet. Mia, can you help? Of course, JB. Once Guy and the other Jordans farmers have harvested all of their oats and put them in the grain store, they're then moved to a new place to be rolled flat into the oats you might recognise in your cereal or porridge. Once the oats are flat, they're then brought to us at Jordan Cereals, where we make all of our cereals and cereal bars in our factory. The oats are mixed together with lots of different ingredients, things like apples, nuts, raspberries or cranberries they're all mixed together with some honey and some syrup to stick it together just like you make a cereal bar at home and then it's made into one really big cereal bar this cereal bar is then cut up into lots of little cereal bars which are wrapped up and then sent to the supermarket ready for you to buy so that's how the oats get from guys grain stores into your cereal bar Thanks, Mia. I'll certainly remember that the next time I'm tucking into a cereal bar. What great questions. Thank you to all of you who've asked them. And of course, to our panel of brilliant experts who've helped us learn so much. I hope you guys at home watching and taking part have learned a lot too. Now, we've finally come to the moment that we've all been waiting for, or at least I have anyway. It's time to announce the winner 
of our Harvest Festival Poetry Competition. Now, lots of you have been hard at work over these last few weeks writing poems to celebrate the harvest. We've received hundreds of entries and we've loved reading them all. So well done to everyone. You've done a fantastic job. Such a great job, in fact, that it was very hard to choose, of course. But eventually the judges decided that there were three poems that they felt summed up the harvest perfectly. So we've got a first, second and third prize. The theme of the poetry competition was how nature helps the harvest. And today we've learned that nature is very important for farmers growing food and of course during harvest as well. So how do you put that into a poem? Well, for our three prize winners, the answer is brilliantly. And here they are. In third place, Bitten Class from John Grant Special School in Caister-on-Sea. Congratulations, Bitten Class. You win a Jordan's hamper plus some extra goodies. <laughs> in second place, Ruby Whitaker from Kegworth Primary School. Well done, Ruby. Your prize is a bundle that includes a Jordan's hamper and a bird feeder kit. Well done. And finally, in first place, Violet Brown from West Lodge School in Sidcup. You win a Bug Hotel for your school, a bird feeder kit, and of course, a delicious Jordan's hamper. Congratulations, Violet. The judges all agreed that your poem perfectly captured nature's role in helping the harvest. So as well as sending you your prize bundle, we think everyone deserves to hear your brilliant words. So I'm gonna read out your poem right now to finish off our virtual harvest festival. Here we go. The hot summer's over, the long winter's coming. There's wheat to cut and fruit to pick. There's lots to be done. The bees are making honey. The farmer's working hard. There's wheat to cut and fruit to pick. There's lots to be done. The rain has fallen from above and down below, the crops we've sown are ready to be harvested. There's wheat to cut and fruit to pick. There's lots to be done. It's time to pick the apples the lettuce and the plums, and dig up squash and pumpkins for all the little ones. Just because it's hard work, there still can be fun. There's lots of delicious food to eat because it's harvest time. Wow, congratulations, Violet. What a brilliant poem and such a fantastic way to end our very special Harvest Festival assembly. I don't know about you, but I've learned so much about harvest today and everything that our farmers do to grow the food that we eat. How about you, JB? I couldn't agree more, Mia. I'm so glad I was here today to learn with you all. And I now know way more about worm poo than I ever thought I would. I'm just really looking forward to taking what we've learned today and making sure that the wildlife on my farm continue to be protected, especially now that I know how important nature is in helping us make our food. That's so great to hear, JB. Nature is so important for growing the food that we eat. And at Jordan's, all of our farmers do lots to protect nature and make homes for wildlife. But don't forget, there's a lot that you can do for nature as well at home, as Alison said earlier. It can be in your own back garden, on your balcony, you don't have to live on a farm to protect nature. Another idea is why don't you head over to the Jordans website because there we've got lots of fun ideas that you can do over this weekend. And if you'd like to learn even more about how you can do more to help nature, head over to the Wildlife Trust's Wildlife Watch website because they've got tons of ideas on there. And finally, I want to say a very big thank you to all of you that have joined us today. And of course, to every one of you that wrote one of those brilliant poems. We've had over 500 poems, so good. It's been wonderful to have us all together virtually and learn more about harvest, why nature's so important and where our food comes from. So I hope you're feeling as inspired as JB and I are. Thank you everyone, goodbye.
Thank you.